to the platform Swiss Liver Patients Association, Swiss HIPAA, today with the presentation of Professor Dr. Nasser Semu, Senior Physician at the Inselspital Bern, on the topic of Hepatitis B. Welcome, Professor Semu. Thank you, Ms. Bobson. So the topic today is the Hepatitis B virus infection. And so just to give you some uh, data on, on the number of um, Hepatitis B infection. So first of all, the Hepatitis B virus infection is a frequent and a severe infectious disease, which is caused by a virus. And worldwide, there are approximately about 260 million people who are chronically infected with the HPV virus. In Europe, it is known that there are about 50 million chronically infected HPV virus patients. And of note, or it is interesting to note that about 1 million people die annually from the complications of a chronic hepatitis B infection. Uh, regarding the numbers in Switzerland, um, there are approximately 40,000 uh, patients or persons who are chronically infected with HPV virus. And together with hepatitis C virus infection, it is one of the most common forms in Switzerland. It is, in comparison to HIV, highly contagious. However, and luckily, since the introduction of hepatitis B vaccination, there is a decrease of new hepatitis B infections recently. So let's come to the HPV transmission. It is primarily transmitted through contaminated blood. And the most common routes of infection are, first of all, unprotected sexual intercourse, but also the exchange of the consumption or preparation of materials in the case of intravenous or nasal drug use. And another uh, route of infection is the transmission from the infected mother to the newborn. Regarding infection via blood transfusion, this is hardly ever uh, the case since the introduction of hepatitis B testing for many years now. And last but not least, tattoos, piercings, but also the use or sharing the same razor blades might um, present also a route of infection. So what are the hepatitis B risk groups? Previously, this group used to be like consumers of intravenous drug um, uh, patients, and this used to be the largest risk group. And nowadays, it's mainly persons with unprotected sexual contacts or behavior. Another risk group also is um, or are persons in the healthcare system through because they do have contact with, with blood or blood products which might be infected. Then this is also a major risk group, migrants from countries with high hepatitis B virus rates, as shown below, such as Asia, the Middle Eastern part, but also um, Sub-Saharan Africa. And in these countries, the mother-to-child transmission is, is very common. So the next part is who should be tested for HPV? And as you can see here, so all persons or patients who do have elevated liver enzymes and or signs of hepatitis or a chronic liver disease of unclear etiology should be tested for HPV. Then patients who do have a first diagnosis of liver cancer, and here as an abbreviation HCC, which is hepatocellular carcinoma. And then of course, as shown before, patients with a migration background and from regions with high HPV prevalence, such as Africa, Eastern Europe, and the Mediterranean. Um, other persons who should be tested for HPV are family members or sexual partners of HPV-infected patients. But also medical personnel, as I've mentioned before, that they 
are a risk group, then homosexuals and all persons with frequently changing sexual partners and active or former intravenous drug users. Dialysis patients are also a kind of a risk group and also should be tested and they are regular te regularly tested for um, HPV and other viral infections anyhow. HIV and or HCV infected patients should also be tested for HPV and then organ recipients before transplantation and this is also no, um, happening in our center since we are a big transplantation center especially for liver transplantation and this um, um, this uh, like for organ donors but also persons who would like to um, be blood donors those persons are regularly tested for any kind of infection including HPV and then patients before or during immunosuppressive or <clears throat> chemotherapy and last but not least pregnant women also in Switzerland are regularly tested for hepatitis B and here in brackets shown the HBS antigen because if they are tested positive uh, the newborn will be um, actively and passively vaccinated um, for HPV. So let's come to kind of symptoms and the cause of HPV. What you should know or my, what might interest you is that the incubation period after infection with hepatitis B is about 60 to 120 days. So the incubation period means like the time point from where you get infected until the time point where you can um, have symptoms. And here it is important to note that the cause can be very different. Most of the cases, um, the patient or the person um, shows is unspecific or shows no symptoms, neither in the acute nor in the chronic infection phase. So if there are symptoms, and this is then mainly in the acute phase, then this patient or the person shows a yellowing of the skin and the eyes, a dark urine, might have an extreme fatigue, but also nausea, vomiting, as well as abdominal pain. So, as you can see here in the image, what you can see is this acute phase, and if the diagnosis or if the hepatitis B is not and um, diagnosed in an early phase, in the acute phase, it, and it becomes chronic uh, or it evolves to chronic infection. The chronic infection um, might progress to a scarring of the parenchyma of the liver, and this is going to be the liver cirrhosis, which then can cause complications such as the liver cancer, but also um, like um, a water belly, so liquid in the, in the, in the abdomen which is also called ascites. As you can see here, this is a, a patient with this huge belly. This is the water belly, the ascites. And here in this image, this is a, an image or a picture from a gastroscopy showing the esophagus with these huge uh, varicosis veins. And they might develop the risk for a hemorrhage and the patient can bleed and die from this hemorrhage. So, the good thing is that more than 90% of the adults with hepatitis B infection recover completely from an acute hepatitis B infection. However, in contrast, up, up to 90% of the infected newborns and the children develop a chronic hepatitis B infection. Now let's come to the diagnosis of hepatitis B. So the presence of hepatitis B may be indicated by an increase in certain liver values. These are the transaminases, so liver enzymes. And various laboratory tests can provide evidence of antibodies and viral proteins. These tests make it possible to distinguish between fresh or an acute and a chronic hepatitis B infection. 
they also can show whether an immunity is present or not. Um, regarding the prevention, so protection against hepatitis B is provided by a highly if effective vaccine, which is administered in three injections. So usually the regimen is like you get an uh, injection at the time point zero, then after one month, and then uh, after six months. And in more than 95% of persons who are vaccinated do have a protection after this. It is recommended that all infants and all at-risk groups be vaccinated against hepatitis B. And this also includes children of infected mothers who are vaccinated immediately after birth to prevent infection of the infant. Vaccination is also recommended when living together in the same household or during sexual contact. Healthcare workers should also be vaccinated against hepatitis B. And the good thing is that the healthcare insurance companies do cover the costs for this vaccination. For the prevention, it's also important that uh, to have a protected sexual intercourse by using condoms um, during the sexual contact, which then in turn re reduces the risk of infection with the HPV virus. Uh, one important thing is, so if one person is infected with hepatitis B, is not to share shavers or toothbrushes together. And care should also be taken with tattoos, piercings, and manicures and pedicures, as well as commercial shaving with blades. So let's come to the treatment now. The good thing is that since acute hepatitis B heals itself without any complications in most of the adults, and I've told that before, this is in more than 90% the case, there is no specific, specific uh, treatment required. However, in chronic hepatitis B, um, there is a treatment. Uh, this chronic infection can be treated with special drugs especially with antiviral therapies. The thing is that a cure is only possible, unfortunately, in rare cases, since this virus, or since the virus genetic material usually remains in the liver cells, even with successful therapy. And the good thing is that the treatment, and this is in the end, the aim of an antiviral treatment, the aim of the antiviral treatment is to avoid progression to liver cirrhosis with all its complications. So if you do treat this patient, then the viral load gets reduced, then there is no inflammation and consequently no fibrosis, no cirrhosis and no complications. Um, not everyone with a chronic hepatitis B is indicated for this treatment. However, affected individuals should be under regular medical supervision for the monitoring. And usually we do this like uh, in our center in Bern, like for example, once a year, the patient comes for a blood test, for a, for a fibro scan, and maybe even for an ultrasound. And if there are no signs of a progression, no treatment is needed, and then the patient will come um, within the in next year. Liver transplantation is a treatment option for patients with an advanced liver disease, and here we call it acute on chronic liver disease. So if the liver is not functioning properly anymore. So finally, the conclusion is, uh, is if you are at risk for hepatitis B infection, get tested. You can do this with your GP, for example. If you are tested negative, my suggestion is to get vaccinated. However, if you are tested positive for HPV, have also partner and family members tested and vaccinated if necessary. Regarding the, the, the antiviral treatment, it's like this, that um, the treatment controls HPV and prevents complications. 
but a cure is rare with this current treatment. However, the focus of the current uh, research is to develop new antiviral drugs with the goal, with the aim of cure. And my impression, or I think that in five to eight years, we will have these new drugs with the aim of functional cure. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the instructive and exciting presentation, Professor Zemo, and your great personal commitment. Thank you very much.